G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here. In this video today, we're going to take a look at a mixed bag of suggestions that we received from the really specific vMix tutorials from YouTube comments video. We didn't really need a full video for all of them, so we've just combined them together. But feel free to jump ahead to something that might pique your interest by using the video chapters. We'll be talking about our third-party application forum, VST3s, and best practices for your PC or laptop setup with vMix. Firstly, thanks for all the video suggestions. If you do have one of your own, you can click the link up here or go through to the video via the description. Now on the vMix forums, we have a section for third-party applications that work with vMix. These apps usually take advantage of the vMix API to add custom functionality. There are popular ones for scoreboards, control, titling, audio, and a bunch of other stuff. Now, if you're interested in trying some of these out, I'd recommend heading to forums.vmix.com and then navigating to the third-party software and development section. You might find something that you can use as a part of your next production. Now, we had a suggestion to talk about different available plugins that are made by third-party developers. Now, unfortunately, we can't really highlight specific plugins or apps as we didn't make them ourselves. Sometimes apps don't get updated, they don't work with newer technologies or vMix updates, or they might have bugs themselves. Now, if we recommend a specific third-party software and there are issues, then we are the ones that are likely to receive emails about them, and we do on a regular basis. So unfortunately, it's not something that we can kind of promote because we're the ones that end up supporting an app that we didn't create. So I would recommend checking out our forums to see if there are any on there that you might like to use. Uh, you can then read the forums to see people's experiences with each one, or check out various streaming Facebook groups, subreddits, and underground MySpace pages for reviews of the different applications that um, are posted there. Now we built vMix with an open API so that you can build your own application or plugin, or even create software and hardware with vMix under the hood. We've seen it used to power some really crazy pieces of software, hardware, and projects, and you wouldn't even know that vMix was the one running it. Who knows, you might even decide to make your own software or use the vMix API to power your next project. Don't forget to add it to the forums for other people to check out. You can also find more information about the API in the help guide linked below. We had a comment from Rich asking about VST3 plugins with vMix. Now, to be honest, we don't do a huge amount of live productions here, so we're probably not the best to comment on the best plugins in real-world situations. Over the years, we've had a lot of people comment about using NS1, Max Volume, L2, Ultra Maximizer, and Vocal Writer as some popular options. I personally use the NS1 noise suppressor here in our studio to remove the computer noise from behind me. Now, I like to do it because it allows me to quickly add it in vMix and I can control everything directly in vMix to remove this noise. Uh, it's really simple to add a VST3 into vMix. Firstly, you just need to install the Waves application uh, and make sure that you have your plugin licensed and installed to your vMix computer. Then you can go into the audio settings of your input or your master or bus and then add the plugins and make changes to it. So I'll quickly go into the camera here. So if I go into the camera settings here and I go to the plugins, you can see that I have NS1 stereo and it is ticked, which means it's currently enabled. And then I can show the editor here and I can make adjustments here to the particular plugin. Now, you'll also notice that I have another one here called Waves Tune Real Time, and that is for my auto tune. So when I like to do some singing here on the uh, tutorial PC, I can turn that on and turn that off. Now I can easily do that with a shortcut. So if I close out of here and head up to the shortcut section of vMix, what I can do is add a shortcut like I have here to turn on and off the audio plugin. So if I quickly edit this, you'll see some functions for audio plugin. You can toggle them on and off and you can do a few different things here with the shortcuts. So I've currently got this set up. So when I press my red button over here, when I hold it down, it will leave the uh, plugin on. I can do my singing and then when I release it, the plugin will go off. So that's what I've got these shortcuts set up to do. So if I do something like this, do you believe in life after love? That's what I usually do with my tutorial and I can set up those shortcuts to turn them on and off. Now, if you've got some VST3s that you can't live without, feel free to drop a comment for Rich to check out. The great thing about Waves is that you can demo it for seven days. So if we have some suggestions in the comments, feel free to try them out for a week and see how they go. Also, most of the plugins have their own YouTube video explaining how they work and what they do. So it might be an idea to have a look around the Waves website at the different things that you could try. 
Now in regards to best practices for VST3 plugins, my recommendation would be to not solely rely on them to create the perfect audio for your stream. I would definitely try and make sure that your studio has been set up for good audio, like good acoustics, like decent microphones, microphone placement, all that kind of stuff. You are going to have some issues if you just start trying to use every single plugin that you can possibly find to correct everything and make the audio awesome. You may also want to look into maybe having a mixer or using Dante or something in order to get the audio into vMix already configured, um, but that's something that you can think about. Now, if you have too many plugins, vMix won't have enough time to process the audio and the plugins, so you may start hearing audio dropouts. Now, each plugin does something different, so it's really hard to know which plugins are going to cause the most processing or potential delay. At most, two or three plugins would be your safest bet. However, you can experiment with different plugins and see how that affects your audio performance in vMix. If you do require a number of effects, then you can look for plugins that maybe offer a range of enhancements. So instead of having a single plugin for a single uh, adjustment, you might find one plugin that does five different things. So that might be a thing to look at as well. Now, each of the plugins have their own info sheet that will tell you whether it's a live plugin and how long it might take to process and that sort of thing. So it's a good idea to check that out, but it's also a good idea to try that seven day trial just to make sure that you are going to you know, be able to use it properly in your vMix production. Now, another thing to consider as well is if you go in here to your plugins, you may um, want to arrange these in order from top to bottom. So vMix will process them from the top down to the bottom first. So say you want your compression to be added at the end, make sure that that's at the bottom of that list because that's the order it's going to be processed in. So depending on how you've added your audio into vMix, you may need to make adjustments to your audio or camera delay. If you're using something like embedded audio directly from the camera, then you may need to add a delay to the camera in order to match the processing delay from the VST3 plugins. If you're using USB audio, then typically that's going to arrive quicker than the camera. So usually you set about a 60 to 80 millisecond delay on a USB microphone or interface. However, if you're using VST3 plugins on that, you may need to shorten that delay so that it syncs up properly. vMix should work with most functional live VST3 audio plugins. The reason we mentioned Wave so much is that that's the main marketplace for VST3 plugins. Uh, if you do have any other ones from other places, then if you store them correctly, then they also should work with vMix. Now we don't support VST1 or VST2 because they're not supported anymore going forward. So VST3 is the current version of a plugin. So that's the one that we support and it's gonna give you the best functionality moving forward. So if you do have any comments for Rich, feel free to leave him a comment. Let him know your favorite VST3 plugin. Let him know how you're using them and how they work best for you in different production situations. So we've had a couple of comments asking about how to optimize laptops and PCs. So I thought we'd go over a few things. Now we have done videos in the past about how to optimize laptops. So you can check the link in the description with our knowledge base guides on what to do and other videos and stuff as well. Now, first thing, if you've got a laptop, plug it in. Most laptops will throttle performance when only using the battery. So make sure that it is plugged in. We receive emails on a weekly basis where someone is trying to do all sorts of things in vMix and their performance is really down and they don't know why. That's because they haven't plugged it in. And if you have a PC, make sure that you plug that in too. You won't believe the performance gains that you'll get with a fully powered PC. All right, so let's take a look at some power options that you can set in Windows now. So let's go into the control panel here and let's go over to hardware and sound and let's go to power options. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that it's set to high performance. So that's something that you wanna set here in your Windows setting. Now I've opened up my NVIDIA control panel. You can do that by right clicking on your desktop and then opening up the NVIDIA control panel. So here I have it here. Now what you can do is go down to the power options and you can set the power management mode to prefer maximum performance. So that's a good idea to do that as well. If you've seen any of our videos or talked to us in the last 10 years, you'll know that the best way to get the best performance out of vMix is to use a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card. Now this can be a little bit confusing if you have a laptop because laptops like to conserve power and performance by routing things through your integrated graphics on your CPU as opposed to using your dedicated graphics card. And it'll use something called Optimus in order to try and do this. 
Now, ideally, I'd recommend checking out our website for the laptops that we recommend that give you the option to use your dedicated graphics card as opposed to using Optimus and then having to change settings in order to get it to work with vMix. I'd recommend checking out the links in the description if you don't have one of our recommended laptops to see how you can go about making those changes to use the dedicated graphics card. So once you've set that up to use the dedicated graphics card, in vMix, if you go to the performance section, you'll see that the card that's in use is this NVIDIA GeForce 1080 Ti, which I have in this computer right here. Now, while we're on this screen here, um, you'll also notice this box here that says high input performance mode. Now, if you've got a newer graphics card that has three gigabytes of memory um, or more, then you can tick this box here. If you've got a newer card, like an NVIDIA GeForce 3000 series card or an Ampere-based um, workstation card, like an A4000 or an A6000, uh, then you can utilize something called resizable bar. And that's a way to access the full allocation of memory on the card for certain things in vMix. So if you have resizable bar on, uh, I wouldn't use this high input performance mode. I would untick this if you're going to be using resizable bar. If you wanna know more about resizable bar, I'd recommend checking out our video on resizable bar. That's linked in the description. It's gonna go over how it works, why it works, and um, you can see what it can do for your production. Seeing as we're talking about graphics cards, hardware encoder, best practice, absolutely. So with a GeForce card, you'll have a three encodes, with a workstation card, you should have unlimited encodes. So when you go through, say your streaming settings, you can tick this use hardware encoder box three times currently. And so that's really important to push all the encoding for your streaming, recording, and those type of things onto the graphics card instead of using your CPU. Now for PCs and laptops, we recommend removing any bloatware that your computer doesn't need. Laptops are notorious for adding audio plugins that no one uses and auto installing virus scanners that think streaming is a virus. So the inbuilt Windows Defender does a really good job as virus scanner. So make sure that that's all up to date and you should be good to go. Again, on a weekly basis, we receive emails from people that have problems trying to stream and they're using third party virus scanners that just blow up and have all sorts of problems with any sort of streaming from your PC. Let's talk about monitors. You need to make sure that your monitors are plugged into your GPU and not into your motherboard. Now, if you have high frame rate monitors, um, especially on a laptop, I would adjust them to use the lowest supported frame rate. For example, the laptops that we have are like 240 Hertz. So we lower them to 60 Hertz. Again, this is all about doing it just for vMix and trying to squeeze as much performance out of the turnip as possible. If you're also using the computer or laptop for gaming, feel free to switch it back to the high refresh rates when you're doing that. Another thing, try not to plug in every monitor that you have. So vMix performance is gonna go down if you start adding tons and tons of monitors to it. Um, you're going to be using up your GPU performance. Now, finally, using identical monitors is a really good way to go. We've seen people mix and match monitor sizes, brands, and all that kind of stuff, and it can cause problems with sync and output and that sort of thing. Um, that also goes for a lot of other things. So if you can, using the same brand of camera uh, or even brand and model of camera, you're gonna get the same sort of picture quality out of it, which is really good for trying to you know, match up your cameras and stuff. Um, using the same audio equipment, um, capture devices are probably gonna give you the least amount of headaches. Um, by using matching equipment, you should get the same quality and sync out of them as well. If you are building a new computer or even if you're running vMix off your old computer, definitely use an SSD if you can and only do recordings and replays on an SSD. Now when running vMix, it's a really good idea to close down everything else. Don't run 14 Chrome tabs and be running After Effects, rendering something at the same time. And the same goes for NDI. If you aren't using your outputs and cameras via NDI, then switch those options off in the settings. So if you go down to your settings here, let's go to our NDI settings. And if you're not using any of these, switch these all off. And hey, Maybe ask yourself, do you really need those 50 inputs that you added for that last production? It's a really good idea to kind of keep your productions trim and only use the inputs that you're actually going to need in your production. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Okay, so just quickly on USB, make sure that if you've got a PC or a laptop with a USB device, a capture device or something, make sure it's plugged into the correct port. Make sure it's a USB 3 going into USB 3 and that sort of thing. Try not to overload too many devices with your USB because you only have a finite amount of USB bandwidth. If you are having issues and you have multiple ports, you may try using a different port. It may be connected to a different bus or something like that. 
Now, try not to use a hub, uh, especially for capture and anything like that. It's probably not gonna give you a great experience. Now, uh, one other thing you might wanna consider is going into the device manager. If you are, are having issues, you can go into the USB section down here. If you right click on something, go to properties, you notice that there is a power management section. And we have noticed that a number of people have said, well, my USB is not working properly. You need to untick the allow computer to turn off to save power. So if you do that, you can click OK. Now this also needs to be done for each device as well. So there's a link in the knowledge base that we have in the description if you wanna check that out, if you wanna go through and make sure that all the USB is going to be working properly. Now to prevent Windows from updating while you're busy doing things, we've added a function in vMix in the settings here. If you go down, I think it's performance, is it? Yes, so disable Windows update while vMix is running. So if you've got that ticked, then when you're doing a live production in front of tens of thousands of people, um, Windows isn't going to update and cause all sorts of problems on your PC. So if you have any warm tips about how to optimize your live productions, feel free to drop us a comment and we can add a like or a heart to it uh, if it's a good one. So if you do have any questions about vMix, send us an email via the support page on vmix.com. Now, if you want a really specific vMix tutorial from one of your YouTube comments, feel free to leave a comment on the linked video down below. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. No matter how hard I try, cause I can't break through.